Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 7th of November. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you an overview of what we can all expect collectively, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail each of the signs from Aries through to Pisces and the key influences for each of those. Now, this week sees on Tuesday a total lunar eclipse, an event which is going to provide an influence for the next six months. Now, the sign of Taurus where this occurs is actually where the moon is rather happy. It's exalted in the sign of Taurus, so it's its second favourite location after being domiciled in the sign of Cancer, but it's very close to the planet of disruption, Uranus. And if you recall, over the last couple of years, Uranus and the planet of restriction, Saturn, in the sign of the collective, Aquarius, have off and on been grating in an attritional and stressful right angle called a square. Now that threads its way through this event. Now, we also have close to the Moon and Uranus, the North Node, a very significant point in terms of our collective destiny. But on the other side of the heavens, we have the Sun, Mercury and Venus, all in Scorpio. The significance of the cluster in Taurus, the cluster in Scorpio and the position of Saturn is they're all in fixed signs. Fixed signs prefer continuity. They're... Uh, happier with knowing how things are, maintaining a degree of stability. So Uranus is pushing us to uh, be more outspoken about our rights in terms of our self-worth. So we're seeing a lot of uh, protest and dissent, but also we're seeing um, the cost of living crisis. And a lot of that is because the second house of Taurus governs food and food distribution. Now obviously we also have the sign of Taurus being an earth sign, very much about the environment and the cost of utilities to heat our homes, to cook with, to light our homes as well. All these are hot topics. So the way people are relating to the right angle between Uranus and Saturn and have been over the last couple of years, whether it's big government, big business, individuals, collective associations, um, such as citizens, uh, finding an outlet through social media, or perhaps uh, union uh, output, is that everybody has a different take on how they want changes to occur. And it's obvious that some kind of reset is occurring, and we need to, to try to adapt to deal with this, and it's really not easy. Now, concurrent to this, the two rulers of the sign of Scorpio are in conflict, Mars and Pluto. So Pluto's in the part of the horoscope that's to do with wanting to maintain the old world order. So big government, big business. But Mars is in the part of the zodiac which is to do with how we think and articulate our ideas, but it's now in retrograde. But they're not on good terms. So uh, this adds to the strident mix that's bubbling up. Also Mars is in a right angle to Neptune, the planet of dreams and the ephemeral world. And this is creating a lot of illusions, a lot of uh, dishonesty, quite honestly. And we're finding that more and more stories about corruption and dishonesty, particularly around money and uh, people looking out for their uh, uh, their uh, uh, friends when they have influence or we're also seeing sexual impropriety a lot of stories are coming to the open so all of this is going to be quite a feature over the next six months but please stay with me as I decipher all of this for each of your 12 zodiac signs but if you would like to understand what year 2023 will hold for you as an individual based on serious astrology and rise above your zodiac forecast if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place of birth I can produce your forecast for next year 
and in my special package you get the rest of this year free and also your life roadmap your character analysis which helps you to understand some of the patterns that have repeated themselves perhaps more difficult energies but also help you to have greater understanding of your opportunities and there's 30 percent off please see the link below finally if you're new to my channel thank you so much for joining me i'd love it if you would subscribe please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you're an ongoing viewer, thank you so much for all your support. So Libra, your week commencing the 7th of November forecast sees Mars now in retrograde, continuing in the ninth house, which is about expressing our freedom, being more adventurous. Perhaps the slowing down of Mars in this location is going to see what energy you do have directed more towards information rather than physical action. Of course, Neptune is still compromising the, the, the spice of Mars because Neptune's in your sector of energy and also of commitments and obligations to others. So the kind of boggy down feeling that may have prevailed through October is going to be so through to the end of November is still there but the eclipse then bursts in and it's all about where you're most you know devoted committed invested it can be emotionally can be romantically it can be financially and of course Uranus on the moon in the eighth house is an interesting one because the eighth house can be about transitions but also deep revelations the two rulers of Scorpio where we have your ruler, Venus, Mercury and the Sun, that actually can be quite a positive set of influences in terms of your everyday finances. But this is not a time to take risks with Saturn in the fifth house of chance and it's not a time to be too generous either. So even if you're getting to know someone that you're drawn towards in a romantic dimension, I just keep a little bit of yourself back at this time. But yeah, Pluto and Mars, of course, are in that quincunx. So Pluto, all about your emotion and sense of security. Mars is in a more daring location, but the two are not united. They're not integrated in a particularly helpful way. So you could try to do something more daring because you need the, the stimuli in some way. Um, but this is time really to be mindful that your ruler is compromised by Saturn. And of course, Saturn therefore is oppressing Mercury and the Sun. So I think when it comes to being speculative with resources, so if you're feeling that uh, things are less promising in terms of your immediate financial situation, I wouldn't be doing anything that's uh, too... Uh, beyond uh, what you are comfortable with, what you could really afford to perhaps speculate with and lose. So this is time to be much more conservative in your approach to all sorts of elements of your life. But with Uranus on the moon in the eighth house, something may happen that just creates an energy which is almost provoking you to do something daring just at a time when it may be better to play a little safer. So a lot of contrasting energies. I've got an instinct that for some Libran people, particularly with the, you know, with the influence of COVID still, you know, in the background, if there's been a real denial of contact and connection and play around your social or romantic situations, this part of you that wants something, is craving something deep and meaningful. That's Uranus with the moon on the eighth house. But it's so important that you only go for it if it really meets your values, because that's what the second house is about. It's not just about money, it's our self-worth. So don't give away anything uh, too easily, but something about you at the moment, even if it's counterintuitive, is pushing you to try different things because just staying as you are is not necessarily proving as fulfilling as you need. And so that sets up some potential conflicts. I don't think this week will be dull, that's for sure.